Hey everyone! For this project, I needed some material that I didn't have, so I ordered it online. It's a 12 inch long by 2 and a quarter inch diameter chunk of mild steel and is quite heavy. The reason I ordered this is because a buddy of mine asked if I could make him a couple parts he needed for a project he's doing for a local business. He sent me this drawing and basically needs these two cone shaped pieces that will end up holding some kind of spool of material. This video is going to be the making of what will be the fixed side that doesn't have a shoulder and will eventually be welded to a shaft. I haven't worked with material of this magnitude before, so it's a bit intimidating. However, I was curious how well the mini lathe would handle it. Also, I thought it would be fun to see if I could actually make something useful based on someone else's drawings. The first step was to cut a slice off closer to the final thickness to make it a bit more manageable in the lathe. Already I learned that I can't cut it all the way through without rotating it, and if I end up doing more work like this, I'll probably have to invest in a horizontal bandsaw. Since I broke the cutoff wheel and didn't have another one, I finished cutting the rest of the material by hand. The final dimension should be one inch thick according to the drawing, so I cut it as close as I could while still giving me enough material to clean it up. The facing cuts were a little more work, but ultimately the first thing to do. As per the drawings, I then needed to bore out a 5 8 inch hole in the middle.
I initially intended on using the boring tool to bring the hole to the final diameter since my 5 8 bit doesn't cut very well, but then decided it would be much easier to just get a new bit. I had a piece of 5 8 inch round stock laying around and decided to do a test fit to see if it needed additional clearance and it fits surprisingly well. I'll be using this round stock later in the project as well. With the hole size confirmed, I thought this was a great opportunity to try a new tool. I picked up this simple deburring kit which includes a handle with a blade in it as well as 10 extra blades. It's made to automatically maintain the correct cutting angle and works really nicely. It beveled the sharp edges in no time and I'll link in the description if anyone is interested. I'm using a little brake cleaner to clean all the cutting fluid off the part and also off the 5 8 inch round stock. Initially, I thought it would work with the other chuck jaws, but I wanted as little stick out as possible, so I switched the jaws back. Since the taper is the entire length of the part and I didn't want to worry about having to bring the part to the final thickness after the taper is cut, I'm using CA glue to attach it to the 5 8 inch round stock rather than to hold it in the chuck directly. My buddy has the part dimension so that it needs a 63 degree angle. However, this is not really a clearly marked angle on this useless angle finder, and since it's pretty much decoration only, I'm just going to get rid of it. Instead, I'm going to use a proper angle finding tool set to the correct angle and use it to adjust the compound slide to what is both close enough for this project and probably at least as accurate as any other method I could do as quickly for finding the angle. Now, it's just a lot of back and forth to cut the taper. It gave this little lathe a bit of a workout and I'm definitely glad I upgraded to the circuit breaker over the fuses.
For some reason, I noticed that the finish was much better when the cutting was done down the taper rather than up. Once the taper was the entire length of the part, I cleaned up the finish with some sandpaper. I'm sure it doesn't need to be as nice as I'm making it, but I want to deliver a quality part. The last thing to do for this project was remove it from the shaft by heating the CA glue. The amount of heat and effort it took to remove the part from the shaft definitely settled any hesitations I had as to the ability to turn a part with this method. And in the end, I had to put it in the press to get the two pieces back apart. So that's it for this video. The second part of this project will be coming soon. Please let me know in the comments what you thought. Hit that thumbs up if you saw something you liked. Please be sure to subscribe if you aren't already, and as always, thanks so much for watching.